Hi everybody, this is Ashley with DAV and I am joined by past DAV National Commander, Dennis Joyner. Dennis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ashley. And today is actually a, a pretty big day, something that um, many veterans and their caregivers have to uh, celebrate and something DAV has fought uh, for quite some time to bring about. And so we're very proud to announce that today, um, the VA finally announced the expansion to phase one veterans uh, of their program of comprehensive assistance for family caregivers, which is uh, the program that provides, you know, a modest stipend, other education and support services to those family caregivers of, of veterans who were disabled in service. And phase one is, is now officially open um, for veterans to apply for those support services. And phase one includes those veterans who were injured or became ill due to their service um, by May 7th, 1975 or prior. Um, so that's including all Vietnam era veterans, Korean War veterans and World War II veterans. So something we're, we're very excited about. Again, this is something DAV has been fighting for for quite some time. And we're very excited that it includes not only veterans who were, were injured, but also veterans uh, who uh, now suffer from illnesses due to their service. So Dennis, can you tell me a little bit about your service and, and how it is? You know, most of our, our viewers are probably familiar with you, um, but for those who might not be, can you tell me just a little bit about um, your service history and how it is that, that you came to be a veteran who was in need of a family caregiver? Yeah. Uh, back in 1969, uh, I was drafted uh, into the Army. Um, after my, you know, training, uh, I was sent off to Vietnam. Uh, I served with the 9th Infantry Division in the Mekong Delta. Uh, I was there only 32 days, and on a patrol, I was, uh, I tripped a, a booby trap, 105 rounds, what they think it was, and it immediately uh, blew off both of my legs uh, above the knee and my left arm. So after uh, you know, being sent back you know, to the States and, and recovering at Valley Forge Army Hospital for four or five months, I went back home to, to pick up my life. Um, at the time you know, that this happened, I was 20 years old. I actually spent my 21st birthday at Valley Forge. Um, from that point when I, I went back home, uh, obviously, you know, uh, I was confined to a wheelchair uh, for the rest of my life. Um, at the time, I, I, I tried artificial limbs, but with my, my limbs, uh, legs off above the knee, it was quite difficult at the time. Uh, they don't have, you know, the, the high technology and in, in the prosthesis that they have today. So I, I just found it easier, uh, you know, and it became as mobile as I possibly could, you know, in, in my wheelchair. Well, obviously, there's a lot of things, you know, over the years that that I could do. And of course, that's what I focused on. But there's obviously a lot of things that I needed assistance with. And, you know, that's you know, what happened to me. And, you know, back then, you know, I joined the DAV uh, you know, immediately, you know, after, you know, coming back. And, you know, that you know, is what, you know, uh, made me, you know, a, a veteran. So, you know, you're certainly not alone. There are many, many other veterans and with, you know, within our organization, we know personally many of these veterans who um, have, have, you know, they've suffered injuries or illnesses decades ago and they've been living with those, making a life with those. And in, in many cases, they've had a family caregiver assisting um, with daily necessities for, for many, many years, all without the support services that are, are provided through this program to uh, post 9-11 veterans. So my question to you is, you know, what does this mean to you and to Donna, your, you know, your wife, your caregiver, to have this finally open and available to you? Uh, to answer that, Ashley, I, I think it's uh, twofold. Uh, first is, is the physical and emotional, just linking them together side of it. Uh, you know, having someone there, you know, to support you physically. I mean, at times it's, uh, you know, yeah, getting, you know, from my, my wheelchair, you know, onto a chair, uh, onto a shower chair. At times I may need some, some help, you know, and making sure, 
that you know the cleanliness you know the body etc so physically uh, and even and also you know, preparing meals I mean you, you can't cook something on a stove and then with a wheelchair try to move it to a table and and things like that so there's just so many little every day-to-day -day things that if you're not missing three limbs are just so normal you know uh, to to everyone but to to us and to me you know it, it's not that that simple and and, uh, and the emotional side of it uh, there's times that you get down you get frustrated uh there's things you want to do uh, uh just as, as an example if i want to go out to eat to a restaurant it's not like i can just say well let's let's go down to so and so restaurant and just get in the car and, and away we go before I go do anything like that, I end up, you know, making a call. Can I get into the restaurant? Is it accessible? You know, so there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, little things uh, like that, that, you know, really affect your, your everyday life. Uh, the other side of it is how it really has affected, you know, uh, Donna uh, and just looking at, at the financial side of it. Uh, back in 2008, my, my right shoulder after, 35 or so years pushing one arm drive wheelchair, it gave out, had to have major, major rotator cuff surgery. Uh, one doctor uh, even you know, uh, put in notes that basically it, it put me in a situation that I was probably somewhat equivalent to, to someone that, you know, was, uh, you know, struggling, you know, maybe with uh, four, four limbs missing, uh, maybe not quite that bad, but bad enough. And so Donna gave up her job. Um, you know, she came, came home. She had uh, worked for a number of years. Uh, of course, her pension went away. Uh, it affected, you know, what she's going to be receiving, you know, for Social Security. Um, and it, it obviously, you know, the, the social side for her. I mean, she wasn't around, you know, co-workers uh, like she, she was for a number of years. Uh, she came home to, to, to care, care for me uh, because, you know, uh, I... I I had quit working, you know, with a shoulder problem, et cetera. And, you know, it, it just had, had a lot of effect on her and has obviously changed her life, maybe not physically, but, you know, in the, the things that she's able to do and making sure that, you know, she is here and assisting me and helping me move around. And, you know, it, is, it also has taken, you know, somewhat of a toll physically, you know, uh, on, on her too. So it, 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 as I said to begin, two sides to it, you know, the physical and emotional difficulties that someone with a major disability, you know, amputation or whatever it might be, and maybe some PTSD, you know, or, or a major illness. I mean, what we have to go through, plus the physical or financial side, you know, of what, you know, our caregiver, our spouse would have to go through. No, I mean, you touched on so many important points there, and it, it kind of made me think, you know, a large portion of the veterans that I'm sure will be applying for this uh, program are, are Vietnam era veterans, and they came home uh, from the war to a, a country that, that was not as welcoming or grateful as, as it very well should have been. Um, so it seems almost like this is, it, it almost is a little bit of recognition, too, for, for what you what you did for what you did in the war for what you came home and, and had to to work with um so do you feel that at all like this is a it's almost a sense of um recognizing your service in a way well uh it, maybe not so much recognizing my actual service in the military but it's recognizing what happened to me you know in my service the country where i was willing to go no questions asked and I was willing to put my life on the line. I mean, fortunately, you know, uh, uh, the good Lord had a, had a different, you know, uh, plan for my life and it, I could get out and go and try to help others, uh, et cetera. But, you know, the, yeah, it, I don't know that it, uh, you know, has, that I feel that, that that takes a place of, you know, the, the fact that we got, you know, very little recognition when we come back. Uh, you know, it, it, we went and did what we were asked to do. It sure wasn't our fault. Uh, it probably wasn't as difficult for me in facing the public when I came back home because I came back through the hospital system. And I also came from a small, small community. So when I come home, you know, there was a lot of um, individuals that, you know, were very caring and, and wanted to see that, 
you know, my life was going to be, you know, as good as possibly could be, even though I had, you know, you know, severe disabilities uh, because of it. Right. Well, I, I, Dennis, I appreciate you, you sharing all that with me today. Once again, wanted to just note today, again, big day for veterans and their caregivers. Um, if you are a veteran who has a family caregiver and, and you think you might be eligible for uh, VA's program of comprehensive assistance for family caregivers, I would encourage you to uh, click the link above, check out the new eligibility criteria. If you find yourself eligible, uh, do apply. Um, if you currently have a caregiver, those benefits will be marked back to the date of application. If, if you do not have a family caregiver at that point, it might, it might vary when those benefits might kick in or when, when retroactive benefits might be applied. Uh, but again, visit the link above and you can find all the information uh, that you need right on VA's website. And we'll, we'll be sure to be posting more. Dennis, I'm, I'm sure there will be no time wasted. I know that you've been keenly uh, watching this issue. And so yours will be, your application will be top of the stack, I'm sure, um, in that application process. So uh, big day for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, I mean, you know, we worked hard, uh, meaning the organization and some of us individually to, to see this day finally come to pass. Uh, I personally always felt that it was quite discriminatory uh, against those of us that had served many years ago, but I sure wouldn't take away from, you know, the service of those, you know, that, who were eligible for it whenever, you know, the first part of it uh, had come to pass. So yeah, very exciting day. I think it's a day in which you know, it's been a long time coming, and uh, there's sure a lot of deserving caregivers out there uh, that uh, sure deserve, you know, what, what little bit they're going to get. Can never make up for, you know, all the, the lost time or lost finances and those effects in life, but it's, it's finally here. It's a great day, and uh, we, you know, I know the DAV uh, has been so supportive and, and has pushed this and fought for it for so long and uh, it's it's a great feeling you know for me individually and i'm sure for the organization itself and we thank you all thank you dennis and, and of course pass my thanks on to donna as well i know she's she is truly a a, a superstar in what she does and and she she does everything she does out of a, a labor of love so uh, thanks to her and all the caregivers uh, again click the link above check out the, the new eligibility criteria. And, and if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below uh, and we will be sure to check those comments. Thanks so much. Thank you.